Hello everybody, my name is Alan, I'm from CyberLab and after post a few videos about TrueNAS and how you can set up it and a few videos about Knowledge NAS and how can you set up it I decided to record this video telling what's the positive things that Knowledge do in comparison for TrueNAS Basically, what Knowledge do better than TrueNAS? I will get only a few points and that in the next video I pretend to do opposite traction what TrueNAS do better than Synology so in this way, we can understand what Synology is doing right and what TrueNAS should copy or at least do in a simple way. So if you like this video and think that it was interesting, please don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed, and let's understand a little bit more about it. So after I post few videos about Knowledge NAS and a few videos about TrueNAS, I decided to try to understand what Synology do better than TrueNAS. Only let's remember, TrueNAS market at least is more dedicated for enterprise companies. Why enterprise? Because they have ability to have a really large pool. I think that's over a pentabyte of data and this pool can be done because they use ZFS. Also, the TrueNAS is more dedicated for high demand. It means that lots of users can use TrueNAS at the same time and this system will work well and will not get so much delays. Also, TrueNAS can be flexible about the hardware. You can have an old computer, let's say, not so old, but an old computer running TrueNAS or you can have an enterprise-grade server running TrueNAS. And depend what's your demand, you can use and you can expand and you can do a lot of things and don't believe that have a limit how many hard drives that can fit in this system. If you think about Synology NAS, Synology NAS is more dedicated for homes, users, small business, medium business. And that is not so much dedicated for corporations. Why I say about it? It's because you have a limitation how many hard drives you can fit in this Synology. You cannot fit as much as you want. Also, the volumes for Synology NAS is limited. I believe that the one that I have, it's mass 108 terabytes. If you want to have more, you need to get other models and that uh, it's not ideal if you want a really big pool size or a really big volume size. Also, you need to go specifically for the hardware for Synology. So you don't have so much flexibility. You can upgrade, but you still need to go for the options that you give. You cannot decide to put a lot of uh, RAM memory because Synology will not allow it. You cannot change your CPU because Synology will not allow it. So through NAS, low latency, fast and UCFS. Synology NAS, it's still fast, but it limits the size of the volume and limits the size of the system. So for you have an idea, through NAS, big companies, Synology, medium, small companies or home users. So this one is what we have in mind. But anyway, Synology do few things that work better than through NAS. So let's start with the authentication system. You have different ways to authenticate your user and those different ways you can have a local or you can have a server that you do the authentication. And this server of authentication, now lots of people start to move for all auto two, but in this case we're going to talk about LDAP. So LDAP it's the way that you do authentication that all your users, all your password, everything is connected only one place and that they will share with different places. So in this way you add the user in one place and that if you have more than one application that need to locate that user, they will use and will locate that user. And this is what it's really good for this system. And Synology and us work really well with this. So if I come here in my Synology, I come here in my control panel and my user old main authentication and here I can only join and that's it. They will work and you can after go in your share folders and do the configuration. TrueNAS is not exactly the same. TrueNAS use mainly the SMB. And because they use SMB normally, what will work better is Active Director. So if I come here in credential, Director Services, 
you can configure the Active Direct that will work really well, but the LDAP will not work so well, and you need to do some extra configurations. And because of this, you have a limitation if you want to use any other system than Windows. SMB is a dedicate only for Windows users, and if you want to connect a Mac or a Linux computer, they will not work exactly as you expect. Why I say that's not work as you expect? Because they will work, but sometimes you can have permission problems. What means permission problems? It means that you're not going to be able to write or not be able to access that specific folder. And this is one of the things. Of course, it's not a deal breaker, but you need to have in mind that Synology NAS do it fast, easy, compared for true NAS. Other thing that we need to have in mind is about the resource management. So if I come here in my true NAS, I have my reporting and here in my reporting, I can see what's going on. So I can see how much of my CPU it's using. And if I come here, I can come from my disk and I can see how much of my disk read and write it's doing. And what's the maximum, what's the minimum and what is going on. It happened exactly the same for each user. But you're gonna see, I don't know what's the percentage of my hard drive is using. If I say that's 1.65 of reading, it's a good, it's massive, it's not massive, they can get better or they can get lower. In the case that you want to do a problem shooting and you want to debug to understand which one that will work better or which hard drive it's close to fail or which hard drive it's running 100% compared for the others, in this way, you cannot see because you cannot see the percentage of usage. You can only see the real data. You can see how much that reading, how much that writing. Different for Synology NAS, Synology will give more information. So if I come here my Synology and come in Resource Manager, here I can see what is going on with my system. I can see how much CPU, memory, network, volume, but this one is not basic information. You can go here in disk and here in disk that you can have more and more information and it will be more useful for you. So if I come here and put custom review, I can see what's the utilization of my system. I can see that my drive 2 is using 5, 2% and my drive 1 is using 0%. In the case that my drive 1 is starting to have 8, 9% of uses all the time, it means that my drive 1 will be the bottleneck, maybe because they have close to be some bad section showing, or maybe it's basically old and it will not have the same performance, or I need to upgrade because this hard drive is getting all the volumes low. In TrueNAS, I don't know what hard drive that is getting my volume slow, but in TrueNAS, you can have more idea. Also, you can come here in the Task Manager, you can see exactly what application and how much each application is using for your system. In TrueNAS, you cannot see a specific what application that's using more for try to understand why it's using, but here in my Synology, yes, I can. Also, I can go specific for what uh, devices connect and what the P for that specific device that's connect and other things that they can, can configure. It. So basically, the disk manager or the resource manager work much better or at least more visual for the Snowden NAS compared for true NAS. This is one of the advance. Next thing that we're gonna have an idea will be the firewall. Why I say about firewall? Firewall, it's not only for external access, but you can configure your firewall for local access. Why I see local access? Because the firewall is interesting to protect some application against of others application and make your system more robust. If I wanted to use basic application, basic configuration, you don't need to do it, but if you want to go a little bit more advanced, you can do better with Synology NAS. So let's give an example. If I come here back in my Synology NAS, come here in my control panel and come here in security and firewall, here I can enable my firewall. Once that enable my firewall will be a specific Synology or disk drive firewall. And if I come here and put edit rules, I can define what they will block, what they will allow. In this case, this rule will allow everything that will be this IP address to access. If I have external access, they will block. If I wanted to create extra applications, suppose that I wanted to block a specific application, I can come here, select, 
and I can block that the FTP will not work for a specific IP address. So if I wanted to block only for that specific range and allowed for other range, or to allow for some location, not for everything, this is the moment that you can do. If I come here in my TrueNAS, I don't have this option. So unless my firewall for my router or my external firewall work, they will not have any specific policy, only any specific rule specific for my TrueNAS, it will be a generic. Next thing that we're gonna talk will be about snapshot replication. So let's go first for replication. Replication, if I come here in my data protection, I can set replication or I can set rsync. And both work really well. The idea for replication or the rsync is to get one server and put the information for this one server to another server to guarantee that if this one fail, you will still have the data for the second one. So it's considered as a backup, one of options for backup, but this backup, different for rsync, if you want to choose stop the machine one and only run the machine two, you can do it. Let's say why I want to do it. Imagine that you want to do a test. You have all your applications running machine one and that next day you want that machine two start to work to see if it's working everything right and will have no problem or at least migrate for the next system until my first machine has been upgraded. The good thing, you can do it, but with TrueNAS it's quite complicated and with TrueNAS it's quite a uh, risk for you to do if you don't know what you're doing. So if I come here in Add and I come here, here I can have the destination where I want to connect if it's this system or different system and where I want to save it. If I want to encrypt it, but if I come here in Advanced Information, here you need to be in mind that depend what kind of uh, system or what you want to do. You need to define if it's push or pull. If you want to copy all the data from one server to another, you need to push. If you want to do opposite, you need to pull and continue on. Other thing that you need to have in mind as well, it's once that you want to swap or switch it, it's not only you switch. You need to go here in required in the destination the policy that you want to be read and write and you need to change it. If you want to set only for reading, you need to set as a read. If you want to set only for read and write, you need to do it. And one problem that you have with TrueNAS is if you don't configure it properly, you can potentially lose your data. Suppose that the server 2 you use for 2-3 days and once that server 1 go live again, all the data that was present in that server one for two days ago will be overwrite in the server one and that you're going to lose this data. And this is the trick part. You need to do everything configurate before you do this information. Other thing, TrueNAS will use a snapshot for replication. So you need to set up a replication for that uh, data set and that they will do replication to get with snapshot. Basically, they will create a snapshot in another system plus a local snapshot. Different for the Synology NAS, Synology NAS, it's more easy to do this process. If I come here in my Synology NAS, I can open the snapshot and replication and here I can do it. I can put OK and I can come here in my replication. I can set up replication for the server one to do backup in the server two. I can see what is going on. So in this case, server beta, it's the source and the alpha, it's the destination service. And if I want to see the statistics, how much data that is recorded here, what is the flow that is going, and I can set up or sync it according for my demand. And this one is not necessarily linked to my snapshot. I can set up different frequency of backup compared for my snapshots, so I don't need it to match both. And one thing that's incredible for this knowledge now since the time of recovery. If perhaps I have a problem in the server one and I want to start to use the server two as a main one, I can come here in action and I put switch over. Once that I click switch over, the server one will become 
the obsolete server and the server 2 will be the main server that will have all the data and that's it will do this swap all the information that will be recorded in server 2 they will keep in server 2 and either that server 1 is start they will not copy all the information over they will wait you to sync and call back before the server 1 is start to be alive and once that you do it it's really easy because you only can change the DNS or you can change the IP and that this server 2 will be your main server and the server one you can do any upgrade or you can do any try or you can do anything that you want and in this way you have no chance to make a mistake because it's only one click switch over and that's it the two NAS you need to do more configuration now the next thing that we're gonna talk it's about permission I think that I post a few videos about permission using the true NAS and that uh, the Synology NAS I post only one and why is it TrueNAS is more complicated to set up permissions. So if I come here my TrueNAS, I come here my data set, the permission TrueNAS is based on the SL and that if you want to create a specific permission for a specific group to have access, you need to create here. And all the time that you want to add one user specific, you need to come here at the user and you should to select that specific user and you need to allow this permission to be overwrite of the system and if I come here my local users and click in a user I don't know what permission this user has unless I search for each data set and try to understand what permission he has I cannot have a full list of permissions that they will give me and in this one it's frustrate because if you have one true data set yes it's totally fine but if you have 10 15 data sets then it will be 10 15 different locations that you need to look if I come here in my Synology, it's much easier to do this permission. I can come here in Control Panel, User, and I can select any user that I want. Let's say that I want to permit Alan to have access for something. I can come here, Edit, Permissions, and I can modify the permissions. The same thing for the group. I can come here in my group. I can select what group that I want, Edit, Go to Permissions, and I can set the permissions. Or even better, I can go specific for a share folder or the data set. I can select my data set. I can come here and I put edit and I can set permissions. Or either then I'm using my file system and I say, mm, I think that someone needed to have a permission only for this folder. So I can come here, properties. If I come here, I can see the permission for this specific folder and I can see that those users have permissions, the group have permissions. And in this way, it's much easier to understand what permission, what uh, information they have. And in the end, the last thing that Synology NAS do better, but this one is a little bit a trick because it's not the main idea for the true NAS, is the web interface. True NAS, as the name, it's only a NAS and it's dedicated to be a NAS, a fast and a big NAS. TrueNAS it's a hybrid system that's mixed between a NAS and a cloud system. If I come here in my Synology NAS, I can have access for my data directly in my file station. I can select the folders that I have and I can see what exactly folder that's inside this one. And I can come here and put to download that specific folder. I can upload that specific folder directly in the web page. Also, I can install Synology Drive and I can do this link directly for the web page. If I come here in my TrueNAS, I don't have this option. If I want to see what is inside this data set, I have no idea. Unless I connect for the SMB, I cannot access this data set because it's not accessible for the web page. And this reason that I say, I don't know if this one is a fair comparison specifically, but TrueNAS don't give an option for web interface only the Synology NAS and Synology NAS do it quite well. So Synology NAS will be a hybrid system and True NAS will be only a NAS system. So in this way, we're arriving at the end of the video. I explained a few things that Synology NAS do better than True NAS. Of course, maybe we'll have more and maybe it's only my opinion and that you guys don't agree with it, but at least it's good to know. So if you guys like this video and think that was interesting, please don't forget to leave a like Consider subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed and see you next time. Bye.